I see the crystal raindrops fall And the beauty of it all Is when the sun comes shining through To make those rainbows in my mind When I think of you sometime I wanna spend some time with you Hey guys, my name is Didi, but most people know me as Garabo. I am Zamile Kumalo. Who is the love of my life. And we've been together for five years. Married just shy of two years. We met on campus, so I was going to get lunch. There's like a dining hall at, you know, at the university called Cluster Cell. And uh, it was <laughs> through... <laughs> through a mutual friend. I was like, hmm, the guy with the nice car. There was really nothing to it, really. It was just a pretty girl that I saw. Um, I was in a relationship at that time. Then one day I was sitting in my room and I felt, it's weird, I can't explain it, but I felt the Holy Spirit basically. There was a voice saying, Zam is going to be your husband. And I was like, that is weird. Because I barely knew this person. I mean, we'd met a couple of times, spoken a bit here and there, but I didn't know who he really was. So when I felt that voice in my spirit saying he would be my husband, I found it a bit awkward. It was probably until the following year where we actually started, you know, getting closer as friends. It felt like somehow our paths started to align. Literally, he started having classes in the same buildings that I did. would bump into each other often. Zam had never been on the bus, guys, ever. I'd never seen him on the bus. Um, he was, because he obviously had the nice car, so. <laughs> because we saw each other so often, we automatically became friends, like genuinely good friends. She was literally a creme de la creme type of person. And uh, my friends were actually keen on her as well. I didn't tell him, obviously, that, listen, my guy, there was a voice in my spirit saying, you're going to be my husband. Because even then, although it was confirmed twice, I still wasn't, I was like, it could have been anything. Like, let me not jump the gun. So she actually went on dates uh, <laughs> with, I think, two of my friends. Uh, but obviously at that time, her and I were still friends. And I, and I was actually part of the setup of those dates. And I was like, yeah, no, sure. We're going on a date. He's a very cool guy. You know, uh, you know that's how genuine our, our friendship was. You know, I wanted literally the best for her. I was like, God... If it's truly, truly, truly your intention for this person to be my husband, then you will put it in his heart to pursue me. We really got to know each other in a, like in a very legitimate and genuine way. So um, come time when, you know, I thought mm, maybe this would be a good idea. You know, all the fundamentals were already laid down and it, it just made it so much easier to just build on that. The first kiss. <laughs> Tell me about the first kiss. <laughs> <laughs> We're actually in the car and he was trying to tickle me because Zam is not ticklish. Yeah. The only place where he's ticklish is on his neck. So she would always like, like try to you know, like tease me and you know, and I would always feel like stop, stop or whatever. And then he tickled me. Then I tried to lean in to lick his neck because I know it sounds gross guys, but. <laughs> so eventually I turned and tried to bite her tongue. And while he was trying to fight me off, I think that's when our faces met. She says that was the first time I'm saying that was not a kiss. That was a bite. <laughs> so I did. And he says it wasn't a kiss. Our lips just touched, but it was definitely a kiss because that's when I think we first realized, oh my God, oh my God, we actually need to be more than friends. I think it was uh, early 2016 when uh, I would say things got official. We went to some golf estate and we were just hanging out. And then when the sun was setting, I remember this so well, the sun was setting and he grabbed my hands and he said to me, um, listen, Didi, I really care about you and you have my heart. And I know it's too early and I don't want to rush into anything, but I have all the intentions to have a future with her. And I'm not going to ask her out right now, but there will come a time when I will ask her to be part of my family and for us to start a family together. And I was like... <laughs> so yeah, I was so delighted because... I think for me it was a thing of, hey man, I don't want to ruin the friendship, but at the same time, we both can't deny and be naive about what's going on. I'm so glad we married now. Like, just dating was not enough because obviously, Sam and I, two years before we got married, made the choice that we're not gonna have sex. So we chose to abstain. It wasn't a thing of one 
forcing the other or you know or anything like that we it's something we both wanted for ourselves and it was so difficult because now it was a it was very tricky when it came to stuff like sleepovers and when we kissed it was like okay we're just doing kissing and not other things now in terms of making the decision that was the easy part maintaining it was a difficult part there was a point where we were so tempted like we were so tempted into having sex and sometimes would be almost like close to crossing our boundaries to a point where we decided maybe we need to break up because I said to him I'm like Zam maybe we should break up because I'd rather because of the word God had given to me I said I would rather not be with you for now than fall into temptation and risk losing you forever so we broke up and I think the breakup lasted I think three days guys after three days we're like nope Nope, we'll create the boundaries. We won't cross the boundaries. We remain for each other. And I think God was just affirming, affirming me every time that this is your person. And I think even when we're facing those challenges, I always consoled myself by saying, God told me that this is my person and I know he's my person. Therefore, I need to remain obedient and wait for the right time. Shout out to her. I think she did a lot of the maintaining, um, especially when things got hot, uh, more than I. So shout out to you, babe. Um, thanks for that. For 40 years, Sowetan has unapologetically told the story of South Africa's trial and triumph. They have challenged political, the only force, the only power that we have is our hands, and social systems that set boundaries for black South Africans. Systems that told you what you can and cannot do. The groundbreaking publication went beyond informing you, but <coughs> But magnified your voice as you raised your fists, demanding the respect you deserve and a shot at opportunities to excel. They cheered with you when you broke through limitations, occupied spaces that weren't made for you, and flipped the narrative South Africa. to affirm your true identity. To celebrate their 40th birthday, Sowetan has partnered up with Netflix to give you a three-part series recognizing cultural and entertainment pioneers that came before us. We talked to some trailblazers of the South African entertainment industry, legendary photographers, and Netflix cast members as they bring to life iconic South African entertainment moments from the last four decades. I'll go first. No, I'll go first. Okay. Was it hard integrating me into your life when we first got together? No. That's like a obvious no. You actually made my life so much more easier. You made me grow as a person. Um, so it felt, it felt like it was meant to be. Like we were meant to function as one. Because even when we were apart, it was quite difficult to be away from you. Mmm, nice. Mm -mm. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if you could go back in time and do something different in our relationship, what would it be? What? Do something different? Yes. You're... Uh... Time to time I think maybe a... Uh wouldn't would have planned better after getting married about you know um contraceptives and that but that i wouldn't i really wouldn't i really would because i'm really happy with the baby now like i love him i love how everything turned out so i don't know i think um even the times that were tough i think there's always been a positive outcome at the end of it so uh, there's not much really um just maybe but the fact that you, you need to relax when i drive <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I can't. That's that's probably one thing I would change. She needs to relax a bit. What happens when he drives? He drives fast. No, she stresses for nothing. He drives too fast. Yeah, it's really not fast. She's she just stresses. But yes, yeah. we'll keep it moving. We'll keep it moving. <laughs> Next. <laughs> oh, you can't put it back. Oh, sorry. Which one was it? My bow. It's fine. We'll cut it out. No, it's not that one. It's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> It's two lines. There, it's there. <laughs> when are you the most in love with me? I am most in love with you when I ask you to do stuff and you jump. Yes, babe. I'll do it now. 
And that's actually not often. <laughs> so she's not in which love is, with me a lot. Which is not often. I'm joking. I love I'm most in love with you, babe, when you are yourself. You're genuinely a loving person, you're genuinely a giving person. So it it doesn't make it hard to love you. So I'm constantly in love with you. Not all the time, but you make it easy to be in love with you most of the time. Right. What, are you not happy with my answer? I'm not. Why? But sometimes you don't love me. No, I said it's... I'm not always in love with you. I love you all the time. I may not always feel like I'm in love with you on certain days when you drive me crazy. But I genuinely do love you and your actions make it easy for me to keep falling in love with you. Does it make sense? Does it make sense? To you. <laughs> to you. I'm <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> is it my turn? What is the greatest thing we have overcome as a couple? I think I touched on it earlier. It's the same. It's the You're asking me. Hello. Oh. <laughs> actually, what is the greatest hey, thing? She's cute. She's cute, bro. Go ahead. What go is ahead. the greatest thing we have overcome as a couple? Go ahead. She's so cute. No, no, no. I have my own as well. I'm okay. giving you the so i think i touched on it earlier on it's the choosing to abstain um two years before marriage i didn't mention this earlier on but we did actually um when we say that we abstained it doesn't mean that we had never had sex before so we did have sex before and we were seeing each other so much and it got to a point where we felt like we're living like husband and wife without the most important thing that a husband and wife engages in and getting to that point where we decide you know what let's fully make this decision and go in all in and respect our boundaries and the promise that we made to god um i think having to wait till marriage was very difficult but it was absolutely worth it and i think what made it easier for us was that we were both aligned in wanting or rather than having that as a desire you know, um, in terms of what we desire for ourselves. So again, man, I, I know some people might relate to it, some might not, but the key takeout from this for me would, would be, you know, the alignment between you and your person to say, this is what we want and, you know, being committed to it. And I think that alignment is probably the one thing that helped, that answers this question, which is what is the greatest thing that you overcome? And I think you're able to overcome when there's alignment, whatever it is that you decide. Absolutely. Okay, uh, next question. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Instruction. Um, look at your partner in the eyes and share some encouraging words with them. Wow, okay. Relax. <laughs> um, yeah, babe. I think uh, you're probably one person who doesn't need so much encouragement because I think you're a very self driven person. Uh, intrinsically motivated, so that's good. Um, so all I all I can say really is continue on that, uh, but always know you're not alone. I'm always here, always to give you a push when needed, which is not often, but there when it's needed. Um, and when I see the need, I will give the push. I think uh, you're doing great as a mother. You're doing great as a wife. Um, yeah, I love the food. It's evident. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, instruction you. <laughs> um, encouragement for you. Babe, you're so hardworking. Like I told them earlier, you're one of the most hardworking people I've ever met in my life. You're one of the most brilliant people. You're very smart and you work really hard. Um, so continue pushing babe i know sometimes it doesn't seem like your work is like sometimes it doesn't feel like you're seeing the results of your hard work but i need you to um lean on the fact that it's not all in vain and you will eventually reap um the fruits of your hard labor um so keep pushing i'm proud of you like genuinely genuinely proud of you always and um just trust that you're doing a great job i don't tell you often but you really are doing a great job and I truly appreciate that. I'm a great dad. <laughs> You're an awesome dad. Good. <laughs> okay, <laughs> whose name? You are. Perfect. Yeah. 
Who's going first? You are. Dear Mrs. Kumalo, addressing you as Mrs. Kumalo still makes my heart leap as much as it did the first time I heard it. Thank you for being you. Thank you for loving yourself enough to know your worth. Thank you for being such a great source of inspiration for me and many others. Thank you for trusting me and holding on to all the promises I have made you. Regardless of how long they may have taken to come to fruition. Thank you for your patience, being patient with me, our relationship, our marriage and our journey um, as a collective and individually. You really do epitomize love being patient. And most importantly, thank you for being patient with my two left feet whenever we have to dance. And there's lots more patient needed there. <laughs> All right, watching you grow from a naive first year student to the most inspiring and goal driven legal professional, dream wife, and the coolest mom has been one of my greatest joys and pleasures. AJ is truly really blessed beyond measure to have you as his mother. May you continue to love him and nurture him and all his other siblings that are yet to follow. All five of them. With God on our side, we are unstoppable. Thank you for your consummate love. Your time, Mrs. Kumar. Yep, that's me. Your turn. <laughs> Dear Zam, my husband, my confidant, my human protector, my best friend, the rib that I was made from, and the man who keeps me grounded and creates room for me to be the best version of myself. Thank you so much for choosing to do life with me. What a great adventure it's been. Our journey is not always perfect or easy. But your desire to work through the difficult times and to be an amazing husband to me is what a true man embodies. We often hear the word love, th love thrown around to express how people feel about each other. And we know very well how Corinthians 1.13 sets out love. It says, love is patient and kind and so much more. As I reflect on this definition of love, it reminds me of how on some days I fall short of loving you the way I should. Sometimes I'm not patient or kind. However, even when I do fall short and on days when I'm not my best, you extend grace to me. And for that, I'm truly grateful. You are the true definition of what it means to love as Christ loved the church. I promise to practice more patience and kindness and to strive to be the best wife to you. You said it's one page. <laughs> I lied. I further would like to thank you for not only being an amazing husband to me, but for also being an awesome and present father to our son. I learned that. <laughs> Atandre and I are so blessed to have you on our team and to get to experience you each and every day on our side. Thank you that I can always rely on you to provide for the both of us and to protect us. It's been a great delight experiencing God's love for me through you. Our future together truly excites me and I cannot wait to see what God has in store for us. I love you so much, Zamile. Kumalo, Mtungwa, Ndabezita, Umzilikazi, Gamashuba. I can't wait to spend the rest of my life with you. Yes, thank you, my love. What's your handshake? Hey! Happy <laughs> baby. Mwah! Guys. Thank you so much guys for watching our episode of Defining Love. I hope uh, it was a plum pleasing pleasure for you all. You guys can catch us on our social media platforms. Uh, on Instagram, I am at ZamKumalo9. And my social media handles, both Instagram and Twitter, are Garabo underscore Didi. That's D I D I for Didi. We've created a playlist for you guys, which will be linked in the description box below. 
don't forget to like comment and subscribe and also click on the bell for notifications in the future <laughs> Woo!